Elizabeth, since I was just a little boy, I have dreamed of the very moment we now stand in. Some boys dream of becoming an astronaut or becoming the president of the United States, but I've dreamed my whole life of finding my wife and becoming her husband. Along with dreaming of my wife, I've always prayed that the story of our relationship would be a unique God-authored story. Well, on January 29th, 2020, that story came to life. I'll never forget flying to that leadership mentoring day in Atlanta when all of a sudden, the most beautiful woman I had ever seen randomly sent me these words on Instagram. I like your tattoos <laughs> and the way you share about Jesus. I genuinely love the fact that you didn't start your message or even introduce yourself with a hello or hey, because I truly feel like we've always known each other. We just went from only talking to God about one another to actually being able to finally speak directly with our person. When I was 11 years old, my dad told me I needed to start praying for my future wife. He said this mysterious woman he kept referring to as my wife was actually alive and out there somewhere right in that very moment. That she was living her life and making decisions. I'm honestly not sure if that day was a Tuesday, but he said she had a Tuesday of her very own today. That blew my mind. The fact that my wife was actually real and somewhere out in the world in that moment had never really hit me like it did right then. He then said I needed to start praying for her every day. He told me to pray for her relationship with God that would be strong, authentic, and her very foundation. He told me to pray for her decisions that she would lean into God and trust his voice and his word above everything else. He told me to pray for her like she was already mine because even then, she already was. You already were. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed for you since that very moment. Some were while praying through my normal list of things to pray for before bed, and then some moments were truly heavy. I remember many times God randomly placing a strong impression on me to pray for you right then and there. I can even recall where I was driving for some of them. I'm not sure what you were going through right then in those moments. But you had a 16-year-old boy in Texas praying and going to battle for you before the Lord. What I'm saying is, I've been fighting for you and leaning toward you long before I ever knew your name. So there should never be a worry or doubt in your mind that, now, that I would ever stop now that I do know your name. And let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> your name. I got curious recently and looked up the meanings of your name and found some things that were truly significant to me. One of the meanings I found for Elizabeth is, my God is abundance. This meant a lot to me because one of my favorite verses, John 10, 10 says that the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy, but that Jesus came, that we may have life, and life more abundantly. Jesus didn't come to just give me some status quo life. He came to give me an abundant life. When I read that your name meant, my God is abundance, I knew God was showing me that you are one of the biggest parts of the truly abundant life Jesus has promised me. Back in March, you sent me a package for my 25th birthday. I had never been in the same room as you, let alone seen you in person. So getting a package that you had written on and even touched was the best and closest thing to that for me. In it were many special things, including the journal I'm reading this from now. But my favorite was a handwritten note which you concluded by telling me that it would be my year of fullness. Those were your words. Year of fullness. We've seen that pop up here and there, but recently God brought it back around when I looked up the definitions of your name. I'm not sure if you know this, but your name literally means fullness of God. When God brought you into my life, He brought His fullness from my life. When I look at or even just think of you, I'll always be reminded of God's promise to give me a fully abundant life. Elizabeth, I promise to love you fiercely, with passion and precision, to always strive to love you in ways that make you truly feel loved. I promise not only to listen to you, but to retain and take to heart what I hear to the best of my ability. I promise to always be a safe place for you, to be your gentle rock. I promise to always keep you first and foremost in my earthly relationships, to make you truly feel like my priority. I promise to keep my heart, mind, and body solely fixed on you, protecting and defending them with daily diligence. You are my one-stop shop. 
I promise to trust you and stay completely vulnerable with you. I promise to push you to be the very best in every way and to be your biggest encourager. But most importantly, I promise to always lead you to the one who led you to me, our rock, our provider, the author and finisher of our incredible God-sized story, Jesus Christ. What I'm trying to say is, baby, you're the woman I've been dreaming of, and now the woman I get to dream with. I love you with all of my heart. Let's go.